Like I said, guys, so today on Bake Our Sports, we are here for the World Rugby Review. This is a video that we put out every Monday where we talk about everything that's going on in international rugby right now. Whether it's in Europe or the Americas or, you know, say the Rugby Championship Tri-Nations, we're going to be talking about absolutely everything rugby every Monday. So if you haven't subscribed yet, guys, and you love your rugby, this is the place to be. Go down there, hit that subscribe button. But let's start discussing the Autumn Nations Cup, the Tri-Nations, and everything in between. <laughs> Alrighty, so the results that we saw over the weekend, France beat Italy 36-5, to Wales unfortunately lost to England 24-13, but a bit of a better performance there, a bit of a better performance. Uh, Portugal versus Brazil, Portugal won 33-13, that was a uh, international friendly there in Lisbon. Uh, Scotland, Fiji obviously was cancelled, we all know about the problems there with Fiji, but there is news about the Fijian rugby team that we might be, uh, might be happy about there. Uh, also with the Tri-Nations, New Zealand beat Argentina 38-0, wauchi mama, wauchi mama. That's going to be a big one to talk about because that's just a side of the Tri-Nations and uh, that's a significant damn well win. So, uh, wow, I look forward to talking about that one. And then uh, finally, Ireland beat Georgia 23-10 to in that game. And that was interesting too because... Obviously, you'd expect Ireland to do a little bit better than 23-10 to 10 against the Georgians. First of all, let's get stuck into the Autumn Nations game. So, I want to talk about the France versus Italy game. Obviously, France won this game 36-5 to 5 in a pretty easy win in the end. Obviously, you know, France is a very damn well good team at the moment. There's a lot of people who are starting to get really worried about them long term. Obviously, they're going to be a very good team come the 2023 World Cup, which is actually in France, by the way. So, like I said last week on the review, this is when you start to prepare for that World Cup. This is the beginning stages. Obviously, you're always in a preparation period, but this is the right at the beginning stages of the preparation for the World Cup because the last time we saw rugby before this little moment international-wise was the World Cup of 2019. So now we're into the first year of a preparation build towards the next World Cup. So that's why you're not seeing the best rugby right now because a lot of formations are being changed, a lot of tactics are being uh, tried out, and it's a whole different ball game to what you're going to be seeing in three years' time. However, France are looking very good right now. I think they're fourth on the rankings. They are, they are fourth on the rankings. They're at 85.66, just behind New Zealand and in front of Ireland. And everyone's saying they're looking really damn well good. And they are looking really damn well good. I do think that last week with the Scotland game that... They should have probably won by more, and it wasn't really that exciting of a game on behalf of France's game style. Scotland didn't exactly play their A team, and really, it was still quite a close game. I know France won it again, and they, they still won decently, but... Uh you know, I still think that France probably should have won that game a little bit more. But like I said, don't expect too much from these outings. Now, in regards to this game specifically against Italy, the first 25 minutes was very even. I think Italy might have been leading at one stage too. They actually weren't doing too bad. I said last week as well, Italy are slightly impressing. I know they lost this game significantly. And they lost the game against Scotland. But, uh, you know, they, they haven't actually been that bad. They actually do look pretty all right compared to what they used to be or compared to what we know Italy to be like. I definitely think that they are going to start improving and I think that the way they're moving the ball and I think that their, uh, their tactics, that are, they're very free-flowing and very open, it's going to really work well for the Italians going forward. And although they're not going to beat France, who are number fourth ranking, they're going to do a lot of damage to a lot of these other teams. And they're probably going to start to move up the table. Now, I want to have a look at where they are ranked, actually. Now, they're in 14th. I think they're better than Tonga. I think they're better than Georgia. Uh, I don't know if they're better than Fiji. or I don't know if they're better than anybody else above uh, Fiji. I think Fiji. I think Fiji are quite low for where we probably would have seen them if they had been competing in this competition. But I think Italy definitely deserve it to be about 12th. Now, obviously, the rankings are always very... This is why these videos are good, because rankings are always all over the shop because it's more analytical based rather than, you know, slight opinion based. So if you play a heap of friendlies against a heap of teams compared to, say, Italy, who want to get a select few games against the big dogs, you know, Georgia play a lot of the lower teams, Italy play a lot of the bigger teams, so Italy lose those games, Georgia win those games. So because of the analytics, Georgia end up being higher in the rankings, which isn't really fair, so that's the only issue that we have with the rankings. Uh, but in the same sense, yeah, I think that Italy, uh, they, they probably should be a little bit higher up, and I have been impressed by them, despite the fact that they did get significantly beaten in this game by France. Now, returning back to France, I want to say that they're a little bit of an over-exaggeration right now until we see their game against England. So next week, uh, it's going to be really... We're going to obviously stream this game. If you didn't know, we stream on this channel. We react to the games live. 
I'm going to react to the England versus France game. Now, I really want to see France against a really top-tier nation like England. That's where we're going to see what they're made of right now, whether they're still not there yet or they're already preparing for a big-time serious push. They play England, who haven't necessarily been impressive, but they've also won all three of their games. So it's the best chance of them showing what they are right now. And obviously, England got very big forwards. France have got very big forwards. France are also very fast on the outside edges. England are very strategic, and that's not exactly a style that I think France will appreciate with what they do. I think that England will be able to strategically you know, decipher what France are doing, and I think they'll be able to pinpoint the gaps and, and really uh, not expose, but show France not to be the finished product yet, which is what people are already starting to talk about. So yeah, I think the France are great, but... I want to see them against England. I want to see them against a top tier nation first, but they definitely deserve to be in fourth above Ireland, above Australia, above Scotland. I think fourth is probably the perfect place for them right now. So I think that's a pretty good uh, reflection in the ranking. Next game, Wales and England. Now, obviously we've seen Wales over the last couple of weeks be absolutely diabolical. They've been shocking. You know, truly, truly, they've been shocking. Now, they lost this game 24-13. Yeah, 24-13. And they weren't actually that bad. Now, I did say last week that Wales always overperform against England. It's just obviously, you know, the UK rivalry there. And they do love the way the English play in response to how the Welsh game style is. So, it didn't really necessarily show me too much about this team because I still think that they would... I think Wales would lose pretty much every one of the top tier nations right now. I would say they'd lose to New Zealand. I'd say they'd lose to Australia, even though Australia aren't great. I don't know about Argentina, but I, honestly, I nearly could see Argentina beating them. I think the only reason that they showed a pretty decent performance here was because of the fact it was against England, and they do love to play them. They looked horrible against Georgia. They looked horrible against Ireland, and this was not the performances that they wanted, especially after the World Cup of disappoint disappointment of the World Cup last year. So, Wales... They've probably saved their coach here. <laughs> They've probably saved their coach by having this kind of performance. And at one stage, I thought they could have snuck home, but England were just too good. They put it away. They haven't looked exceptional at this tournament, but they still keep putting the games away. So you've got to remember that. And specifically in regards to England, I'm also very happy that they have made the final. I'm, I'm very happy that they, even though they haven't looked great necessarily against Ireland uh, or, or necessarily against Wales or against Georgia, they're still in the final. They've won all three games and they're coming up against the French who... They differentiate from what normal competition, normal rugby usually plays at. The French are really good at diversifying what they do. And like I said before, England are very strategic and they, they're very uh, defined in what they do. So it's a very big contrast of game styles. Now, I did say that I thought England would win and I do think England will win. But that will come down to where England are at right now. They're in a very similar stage to kind of what France have been doing. I think that... Uh, we don't necessarily know England just yet. I don't know if the games that they've won have necessarily been down to them as such, more so the fact that everyone's playing average. Wales, I guess the Wales game I'll give them. I guess the Wales game I will give them because they still won that convincingly-ish and Wales did have a decent performance. So... I'll give them Wales, but the Irish game is not convincing, and the Georgia game, despite winning 40-0, wasn't necessarily convincing because that is Georgia. They didn't score a point for three weeks, and yet yeah, I'm not a big... Uh, I, wa I wasn't necessarily overall impressed with that, but I think, yeah, this England versus France game is going to tell us a lot about both these teams, and whoever wins is going to show that they're not pretending right now, they're not being hidden by the other teams, and they're actually a quality damn well team. We also had Scotland versus Fiji obviously get cancelled. Now, Fiji, there is word that they might be able to play that uh, game to not come last, basically, against Georgia next week. Not confirmed yet, have no idea, really. Uh, I think they'll probably win that, but you've got to look at it in the sense that Fiji haven't played a game for over a year and a bit now, and Georgia have played three games in a row. Georgia did lose to Fiji at the World Cup last year, I believe, uh, but and I think Fiji should really be absolutely smacking them, especially with their game style, their open, free game style, and Georgia's very uh, contained and strict, and they weren't terrible, FYI, but uh, yeah, I think that coming up against Fiji, I think Fiji really should win that game, uh, but there is that lack of uh, game preparation and lack of training because obviously the, the virus has been rampant through the team. So that'll be very interesting to see how that game goes. I wouldn't necessarily lock in the Fijians for that win because there has been a lot of controversy off the field and the lack of preparation 
on the field. Finally, in regards to the Autumn Nations Cup, Ireland beat Georgia 23-10. to Now, Ireland still not that impressed, really. Uh, they didn't show me that much last week when they lost to England. They didn't show me much in their defeat of Wales, uh, even though they won significantly. Uh, and this week, they only won by 13 points over a pretty poor Georgian team. Now, Georgia didn't play necessarily bad in this game, but... Ireland didn't really do anything uh, of no. They only won by 13 points, and they gave up Georgia's first points of the tournament, and 10 of them as well at that. But Ireland, yeah, look, at 23-10, they win. Cool story. In regards to the rankings, you know, nothing changes. Ireland won't go above France. Ireland won't go below Australia. Uh, Wales won't go above Argentina. They won't go below Japan. Uh, Japan would be, if Japan were playing right now, if Japan were able to be in the rugby championship, the Tri-Nations, uh, Japan probably would have jumped Wales. Oh, they probably wouldn't have beat Australia or New Zealand. Uh, maybe Argentina, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think Japan, yeah, no. So Wales will stay in ninth. Ireland will stay in fifth. France will definitely stay in fourth. Uh, England will stay in second. Uh, they're very close there with New Zealand, though. New Zealand will get a significant boost to their rankings there uh, on 8.17 8 compared to the 8.73 8 of England, but England still did win over a pretty decent competition, I guess. Uh, so uh, nothing's going to change, really. Nothing's going to change. Now, I just want to briefly go into the Portugal versus Brazil game as well. Uh, that's an international friendly right now. Last week, I said that Portugal will probably jump into the top 20 because I really want to uh, cut off this World Rugby Review at the 20 mark unless there's some significant changes in the rankings. And Portugal are in 21st and Russia are in 20th. Now, Portugal didn't actually jump enough last week. Uh, they beat uh, Brazil in their first friendly 30 to 30. 13, uh, 30 to 10, sorry, 30 to 10. And they didn't jump, so they're 61.96 and Russia are 62.12. So Brazil lost again to Portugal, 33 13. So he just had another three points on each. And really, Portugal just need to muster up 0.16 from that venture. I don't know if there's a third friendly or I don't know what's going on next. That could be it. Uh, but really, Portugal probably should, if not be above Russia, they'd be less than like 0 0.5, 0 0.4 below. So they're really on the precipice of that top 20 right now. And look, I watched the highlights of that game and I thought that uh, Brazil weren't as bad as the scoreline suggested. I think that they just got run down in the second half. It was a very close game going into that second half. I think it was like 7-6. Uh, Brazil aren't that bad. Uh, they're currently 26th right now. Uh, they probably could beat, you know, your Netherlands or your Canada or your Hong Kong or even probably Namibia above them. Oh, Namibia might beat them, but uh, Brazil aren't as bad as those scorelines suggested. I think Portugal are okay. I think that they're probably around that uh, area, but they definitely are better than the Brazilians. Uh, and I can't see them being too much heavier above Uruguay or, or even Romania. I think Portugal could give Romania a good crack. I think Romania versus Portugal would be a good game, but uh, majority of the teams above them. Maybe USA as well. USA, I have no idea how they're so highly ranked in 16th, uh, truly, uh, but it is what it is, I guess. Now, that's Autumn Nations Cup and the International Friendly done. Let's move into the final one, which is the Tri-Nations. Now, this is obviously a massive one. New Zealand won 38-0. Woohoo! 38-0! over Argentina. So that all but locks them up as the Tri-Nations champions. Whether you think that's deserved or not, that's up to you to decide. Uh, they haven't exactly been great, but in the same sense, all three teams haven't necessarily been great. And really, South Africa probably would have won this tournament if they had have come. But in the same sense, you can't say that because... <laughs> They haven't played in over a year's time as well. We've seen that Argentina have completely dropped off from that first game against New Zealand where they beat them 25-15. They haven't played in over a year's time and they're going to be coming down to Australia. I think if South Africa do win, I do think that they do. But in the same sense, you can't back on it. You can't rely on it because people are imagining them like the World Cup winners of last year. And there's been a long time between drinks. So although I do think South Africa would have won this tournament, I don't think it's as easy to say as you would think, because there's been absolutely no preparation in between. Now, like I was saying, guys, in regards to this New Zealand versus Argentina game, uh, New Zealand did win 38 0. It was actually a lot closer for 65 minutes of this game before it got blown out in the end. Uh, Argentina defensively were pretty decent up until the 65 minute mark. It was about, I think it was a 17 0, and there was never really a chance for Argentina to win this game or really even get into the game. Uh, they were just completely outclassed in regards to uh, holding the ball. They would always knock it on, just like we've been seeing a lot recently with them. Uh, they didn't have any attacking fluidity. They had no attack at all, really. Their attack has been horrible. Majority of this tournament, and even their first game when they won 25-15, uh, their attack wasn't exactly great. They scored 25 points, but it ne wasn't necessarily out of control. Uh, it was just a perfect performance on a hole-in-the-ball level and uh, possession level. 
and their defense was great. Second game, attack was horrible, and their defense was good, and they only scored through penalties. Third game, just non-existent. I can't even remember if they had the ball in the attacking 22 throughout the entire game. It was that bad. Uh, but defensively, they were pretty good for 65 minutes. Now, the game blew out when they actually gave two tries away to intercepts, basically. So the defense didn't give them those extra two blowout tries. It was actually the attack that gave the two blowout tries uh, because they just tried to one too many passes and uh, obviously, New Zealand took the pass and, and ended up getting the bonus point, which did win them the Tri-Nations. So it really does confuse me. This whole Tri-Nations has been confusing because Argentina looked good, then looked average, then looked trash. That's the three games they've had so far. Now, they do have a game against Australia this weekend, which will define second place, basically. Australia or Argentina would need to win by like 70 or 80 points over the other to beat New Zealand, so that's not happening. But uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting because they've had a downward trajectory New Zealand have been, th throughout Bledisloe Cup and also Tri-Nations, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And then finally they've gone up. Now, something in regards to New Zealand that I want to say is that a lot of Kiwis are coming out and saying, oh, this is why we're the best in the world. Like, listen, guys, like, a, a week ago, you were just slapping this team around saying this is the, a horrible coach and a horrible team. We need to sort this out. And uh, this is just disappointing and, and uh, not the all black way. And now you're saying again that New Zealand are the best in the world again. Like, let's relax. You've got to realize that you've got to take this whole rugby season as how you take the All Blacks here. So, like I said last week, the first game in the Bledisloe Cup, they were average. They probably should have lost that game, but Australia didn't have that, have that clinical finish at the end through Reese Hodge, who did miss another one against Argentina last week, which would have actually probably won Australia the Tri-Nations. So the first week, they were okay. Second week, they were okay. Came away in the second half, but they were okay. Third week, they were good. They were quality. Blew Australia apart. The fourth week... They weren't that great. They got beaten. They weren't that great. The fifth week, they lost to Argentina. They were not great. And that's when everyone was coming out and slaughtering them. And then they bounced back after two losses in a row. I said, there's no way they're losing three in a row. And they didn't. So I think that New Zealand have to bring their ego back down a little bit. You've won one game 38-0. And really, for 65 minutes, it was 17-0. And then Argentina gave you two freebies. And then, obviously, there was a blowout try right at the end there. So... It wasn't as big a 38-0 blowout as you kind of want to think in regards to New Zealand's actual gameplay. I think that it was probably about a 20-25 to 25 point win if you're thinking about how New Zealand actually played. I just don't think Argentina did anything. And I think that New Zealand had a much better performance and they showed that they have the bounce-back ability. But there's no way that you can say that that one win there makes them return to being the best in the world. Like, absolutely not. This whole season for rugby, international rugby season, has shown that they're a long way off perfect right now. Long way off perfect. So although I did appreciate the performance from New Zealand and I loved the way they bounced back and, you know, there was a really good performance there from Adi Savea. I love Adi Savea in this game. Holy damn. There is still a long way for this team to come and uh, next year, obviously, this was their last game of this rugby season, so we won't see any more from them, but next season uh, is going to really dictate and define how this actual team is right now under this coach and whether uh, we're going to be seeing him take them into the World Cup because just last week, guys, you were slaughtering your team and now you're saying that you're number one. Let's relax. Bring it down a notch. <laughs> Bring it down a notch. So it should be interesting what happens with Argentina or Australia this week, just to see who comes second there. I think that Australia probably should win. I think that Argentina have become tired from this uh, four-week venture, uh, especially, like I said, without the uh, year-long preparation, basically, and no Super Rugby. Uh, and this is definitely showing that without that Super Rugby, uh, Jaguares venture anymore because there is no Super Rugby for them next year and probably not for 2022. I don't know about the longevity of this team. It's going to be very interesting to see how we go. We brought a video out about this. It's going to be very interesting to see how Argentina go. But guys, that is going to do us for today's video. I hope you did enjoy it. Please hit that thumbs up button if you haven't already. Obviously, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. Uh, this is, you know, my channel, but in the same sense, I love to uh, hear what your thoughts are. If you think I'm wrong, if you think I'm right, or, uh, or what your thoughts are going into the future. And if, you know, New Zealand are the team uh, to beat right now, or if you think that, yeah, look, it was a one result and it didn't really show too much there. Australia aren't looking that great necessarily. Argentina aren't. Uh, no one really is right now. Uh, and South Africa aren't even playing, so we can't really see what the World Cup champions are like as we currently speak. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how we go forward, and I'm looking forward to it, really. I am looking forward to seeing who stands up next year and also the England versus France game this week. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Catch you later. See ya.